Today we will learn the word of God through the title of provoked or invoke. Provoke or invoke in Genesis 4, 16 to 26. Before we read the word of God, I would like to share with you something that my father often um, reminds us of. And uh, it really affects his ministry. That is number one and number zero. Maybe you have heard my uh, parents, I mean my father, uh, sharing this. Everything that God gives to us is like a zero. Uh, God gives us uh, talent, uh, wisdom, uh, intelligence, uh, strength. And he gives us a family, uh, brothers and sisters, um, education, everything, our house, our car, those are the zeros. And if all those zeros have no number one, then they're just zeros. And the Lord Jesus Christ is number one, so the number one. If everybody has uh, everything, but there are nothing because they're zeros, but those who have the Lord and place it right in the front, then there is six zeros plus the one on the front is a large number. But if those six zeros have the one in the back and the end, then it is still less than even zero. So the Lord must be first in our life. Let us look at the Word of God in Genesis 4. Then Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch. When he built a city, he called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. To Enoch was born Erad, and Erad fathered Mehujiel, and Mehujiel fathered Methusiel, and Methusiel fathered Lamech. And Lamech took two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other, Zillah. Ada bore Zabjabal. He was the father of those who dwell in the tents and have livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all those who played the lyre, the lyre, and the pipe. Zillah also bore Tubal Cain. He was the forger of all instruments of bronze and iron. The sister of Tubal Cain was Naomah. Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice. You wives of Lamech, listen to what I say. I have killed a man for wounding me, a young man for striking me. If Cain's revenge is sevenfold, then Lamech's is seventy-sevenfold. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and called his name Seth, for she said, God has appointed for me another offspring instead of Abel, for Cain killed him. To Seth also a son was born, and he called his name Enosh, at that time, people began to call upon the name of the Lord. Our Lord, Almighty God, the one who rules over all things, the one who is worthy of our worship and our love, please give us heavenly ears this morning, Lord, so that we can hear your words speak to each of our hearts. Please remove from us all our concerns in our hearts and that we will totally commit this time to you so that we will welcome what you have for us today and Lord rule through this time so that my words and our meditations will be pleasing to you and give us Lord power of the Holy Spirit so that we can accomplish your will in Jesus name we pray amen there are three enemies of the one who follows Christ. That is, the world, the flesh, and the devil. The first chapters of Genesis has been introduced to us, these enemies. First of all, the devil. In chapter 3, the devil came to tempt Adam and Eve to fall. And then, the flesh that we have learned last week in chapter 4, verse 1 to 15, sin was crouching at the heart of the man. And the world, we see that the 
children and descendants of Cain and Abel, they were successful, but they did not have God in their life. They lived without God. And we are now living in a world that is progressing in all aspects, in technology, in medicine, in all aspects of life. And it causes us to be dizzy with the technology and the advancements to the point within 100 years, we did not have a light at night. To, uh, we had to light a lantern. I remember when I was young, 10 to 11 years old, my responsibility was to go out and uh, take down some woods. And then uh, I would have to clean out all the lanterns in the house and put oil in the lantern and put in the wick so that we can have light in the house. And then after that, uh, yes, my, my town had, uh, my village had also electricity. So from the point of nothing uh, to the point where we had electricity, and now not only that, but we have LED lights. So the education that we have in technology and um, medicine is amazing. Uh, my brother said that one who goes into uh, to study medicine, the first two years, uh, once you get into medicine, school, medical school, you have to study it again because of all the new things that come about. And so when we were, we're in this world, we're using all the things that God gives to us, whether it's technology or medicine or whatever it is. God wants us to use it with a grateful heart and a submissive heart, but let us not be uh, conditioned and limited to this world. We are living in the world, but we do not belong to the world. It is very easy for us to be in the um, confinement of this world. And so therefore, we are we push God out of our life, and therefore God is no longer in our lives. And it's a busy day that we have no time for God. Some people say, I believe in God, but they live a, li a life that is like godless. They are like practical atheists without God because there's no time for God in their life. The busyness of life, the things of this world, Netflix or Facebook or work, takes all their time, and they have no longer time for God. It is very easy for us to be pressed into the confinement of this world and God pushed out to progress without God. It's like a person who climbs on a ladder. You try to climb on that ladder, and in the end, at the top, you see that you place the ladder on the wrong side of the building. That ladder was leaning against the wrong side of the wall. Some people say, is that really progress? When you teach a carnivore use a knife and a fork, if I, if we teach someone who is a carni, carnivore, no, Animal. carnivore, <laughs> carnivore, and you use a fork and a knife, then does that make sense? Well, we can only progress when we have the Lord Jesus Christ in our life. And we see that the world lives and exists in the generations, uh, descendants of Cain and Abel. Cain, his descendants in this life, not Abel, but the descendants of Cain um, lived in the world and they had no God in their life. But praise the Lord that at the end of this passage, we see the descendants of Seth and there is a, a glimpse of hope that we see. These two groups talk about the two groups in the world, the group of people that do not fear the Lord and the group of people that fear the Lord. The ungodly people and the godly people, those who have godliness and those who are ungodly. They teach us that process without God, it's only, um, is no progress. True progress is when you have God. We provoke God when we progress, we live but we don't have God in our lives, so it's but an illusion. It is only an illusion. We see that Cain went away from the presence of the Lord. He went away from the presence of the Lord. That means he he turned away from God. 
He was no longer in the presence of the Lord, in the intimacy with God. He did not want to acknowledge God in his life. He went away from the presence of the Lord. And after he killed his brother, Cain did not take the opportunity that God gave had given to him to repent, to return to the Lord. Instead, he went away from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod. That is, he just wandered. He went away. He turned his back to God with his wife, his children, and grandchildren. He built a land in a city, and his children um, continue to grow and grandchildren and progressed. It's like what we are living in nowadays. Every day there's progress. Every year there's an I-47, I-48, I-910, and then you continue in that progress. There are some progress, but those progress are just on the outside. For those are progresses that do not have the Lord in their life. God, I'm sorry, Cain turned away from the Lord. And the Bible said Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bore Enoch. Maybe you wonder, Cain, where did he marry a wife? Well, at that time, Adam and Eve lived a long time. The Bible says that Adam lived to 930 years old and gave four more children. And Cain took one of his um, the, the children to uh, as wife. Uh, at that time, there was no law that uh, did not allow um, him to take his sister as wife. So there's no law against it yet. So we see that progress in, in everything. People think that there is progress. When talking about the city, they built a city and called it Enoch after his son's name. Though the descendants of Cain did not have God, yet they were able to able uh, to build um, a culture, a t city, and took the name of his son to be the name of the city. And then Enoch gave birth to uh, Mehugia and Mehugia to Methusiel and Methusiel uh, gave birth to Lamech. We see that in English it's L, 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 right? L stands for God. It is stands for God. And so now it's not necessarily God as in capital G, but God. They have something about that face towards spirituality. spirituality. Mehujael is uh, talking about the god uh, of El, I think. I'm not sure. But uh, Methusael, the champion of God or the man of God. But this god is not Jehovah God, according to them. They only have uh, the, the culture of uh, religion but they do not have faith. And then the brother's name was Juba, and he was the father of all those who play the lyre and the pipe. And so here's another uh, culture that they had. They have musical uh, culture. And now talking about technology, uh, Zilla also bore Tubal Cain. He was the forger of all instruments of bronze and iron. The sister of Tubal Cain was Nema. So we see that they have technology to make bronze and iron weapons and um, tools. Just like the culture that we are in, uh, we have all this um, technology and education, and we have the ability to take uh, our children to learn dance, to learn instruments. But when we do all these things, and yet we are far from God, then the progress is only an illusion. We think that we are progressing, but it's not going anywhere. It is only stopped at one place, or we even go backwards. The world tries to hide everything, cover up everything that's lacking in their life through material things. They have music, they have uh, language, they have 
literature, they have technology, they have hot, uh, roads, they have all that. Yet their life is lacking because God is lacking, and only God can cover the, up that that emptiness. And if you go along with the world, you will be the same. How to have more money? How to have fame? How to have a, a big house? How to have a, a fancy car? But you will have nothing if you do not have God. And we see that there is bad progress. The bad progress. Those who are given by God intelligence to uh, progress, yet without God, yet those progress only destroys mankind. We see the internet. The internet is something that a great tool. We today, if we want to praise the Lord, we just uh, by the push of a button, we have the words to praise the Lord with, right? And then we want to hear uh, messages, sermons. Uh, last week, uh, someone came and asked me, Pastor, please write down my uh, the verses that you have preached from because I need those verses for me and for my friends. And I was too busy and I didn't see, uh, I didn't have a chance to do it. But then she said, Oh, don't worry, Pastor. I went in on the internet and I wrote it down so you don't have to help me. So in the internet, help us. Oh, but what a shame that the internet has pornography. And violence. To radicalize people to Islam and to ISIS so that they can kill other people. It's the same tool, but without God, it becomes something, a weapon that can kill people rather than to help people. We talk about. Uh, the nucleus and the power of the nuclear weapon that we can use for power, but that can also become a nuclear weapon to kill so many, many people. And we see that there's an arrow that you can just uh, shoot an arrow and kill one person. But now we have the the mother of bombs to kill how many people? So we see that the more we progress, the more we go backwards, the more we are harmful to ourselves and cause death. Things that God gives us becomes an illusion if we don't have God. Our children can even turn around and harm other people and harm your name if your children do not have God. You give your children all types of things, whatever they want, you give to them. They want a headphone, $200, $300, you give it to them. They want a fancy shoe, $500, you give it to them. It's all materials. And in the end, without God, they will become those that bring about harm to you and to society and to others. So the most important thing is that there must be God in your life and God in your family's life, in your children's life. Melek became a murderer. He, he didn't even spare his hands to kill a person. Why is that? Because in the past, there was no bronze iron weapons. You just hit one, uh, you just hit a person, and now with weapons you can kill many people. The ch cities become uh, people who suffer and violence. The technology and the arts and all that just turn the city into a bad city rather than the beauty of the city. Things are used to satisfy the selfishness and the jealousy and the uh, pride of people to live another dollar, to, think, to have another dollar instead of using the time to worship the Lord, serve Him, and to help those in need, to help the family, and to be close to God and to each other. The problem is not that there is no progress in society. Yes, there is progress, but the most important thing here, the main thing here, is those things are accomplished outside of God. All those progress are only illusions. If you have 
progress in education, in your talents, in money, in career, all those things. And without God, all those things are just the number zero. We see that all that is just an illusion. You progress in all aspects, in many aspects, but you're lacking spiritually. John, he acknowledged that Cain was just a microcosm world for the progress. It's just an illusion of mankind. That is, in the family of Cain, let us see that the family of the whole world, there is progress, but there is no progress in relationship with God. Why is that? Because they have failed in their spirituality. They have defied God. And so Cain built a city and named it as Enoch. And why? Because God punished him that you will go wander around the world. And now he stopped in one place to build a city. And he turned away from God. He disobeyed God. He killed his brother Abel. And God punished him, but now he say, "Punish? I don't need you, God." It's like a little kid when the parents say, "Stand still, you can't go anywhere," and then the kid just runs away. It's like thumb his nose at God. That is, God says you are to wander around in the world, and now you just defy God and. Stop at a place, build a city, and name that city his son's name. And you know what? Though king may stop in one place and build a city, yet the unease is in his heart. The unpeace is in his heart. Maybe the city building is just to try to protect himself, for he was afraid that others will will treat him as. He had treated his brother, and he also, when he took his son's name to name the name of the city, God said, "The punishment of sin is death." And Cain tried to uh, do away with God's plan by establishing a city so that there will be the name of his son for the city. And many people want to. Uh, continue their name in that way. They want to give money uh, to uh, offer for something, and then his their name will be uh, carried out. But all those things are of no use. We see the author of Psalm talking about the foolishness of those who live without God. In Psalm forty nine eleven to twelve, their graves are their homes forever, their dwelling places to all generations. Though they call their lands by their own names, man in his pomp will not remain. He is like the beasts that perish. So pay attention to this verse: man in his pomp will not remain. He is like the beasts that perish. So it's all. Useless to turn away from God and challenge God is more foolish than than anything else. It only pushes us back. We cannot conquer God or be victorious over God. The Word of God says, "All knees will bow and all mouths will confess that Jesus is Lord." Would you submit to the Lord right now? Or will you submit to him in hell? There is no way that you can look down on God and think that you can be better than God. We see that all this, if there is progress without God, is only vain vanity. And number two, we see that there is pride. As we have learned last week, Cain was a proudful person. He wants to come to the Lord according to his own ways, not according to the way that the Lord has. Shown him, he wanted to come to the Lord according to what he wants, his standards, not God's standards. He wanted God to accept him and receive him, though he did not come to God with a heart of submission, but to come to the Lord by his own power and by his own righteousness. 
But you know what? No one can come to the Lord based on their own righteousness or their own goodness. There is no one that can come to the Lord by their own goodness. But thank the Lord that He loves us, though we are not as good as what God wants, what He requires from us. In God's grace, He receives us and accepts us. We can only come to the Lord by the sacrifice that He has prepared. Prepare for us. That is through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, and this destroys our pride. Rather than we rely on our own self, our goodness, our virtues to come to God, but no, God says that I only accept you through the Lord Jesus Christ, and only those who humble themselves and submit to the Lord Jesus Christ can come to the Father. And see,、so、we see here that Cain was a proudful person, but now pride upon pride. Built up upon pride, pride is like a ball on the top of a snowy mountain, and it collects together some snow, and then it, as it rolls down the mountain, it becomes larger and larger, a snowball that is larger and larger, to the point that you have a large ball of snow. In the same way, is pride. Pride, if you do not confine it, it becomes like the snowball, and so the pride in chapter. Here that we read, we see that Lemek, we see that Lemek. Not only there was a large snowball, but now it's like an avalanche. Lemek not only sinned, but he sinned、uh, privately and、uh, publicly. He talked, called his wives, and he said, "Adam and Zillah, hear my voice. You wives of Lemek, listen to what I say. I have killed a man for wounding me, a young man for striking me. If Cain's revenge is sevenfold, then Lemek's is seventy-sevenfold." So we see that verse twenty-three and twenty-four. This is is the first poet. I'm sorry. The first poem or the first song in the history of mankind, rather than a song, a praising God or a poem of praising God, he had a poem of pride in himself, calling his wives to himself and say, letting them know how he had killed people and that he will threaten those who threaten him. They will kill. He will kill them if they harm him. The word of God says.、Uh, Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. That's revenge. So that it's even, right? No, God. Here,、uh, Lemek said that if they harm him, not just the, by the flesh, but even harm him by the spirit, he will kill people. Just say one word that he just doesn't ag- agree to, he will just kill them. Just like in California in seventy five, in nineteen seventy five. Something that just happened—that's just ridiculous. There was a person who came in to with his girlfriend into a place, and someone just looked up at the girlfriend, and that guy left and came back with a, a gun and shot the guy. How dare you look at my girlfriend? He said. Lemek is the same way. Whoever harmed him just a little bit, he killed them all the way, not just to punish them. Wow. And so he said pridefully, "I'm more than God. If Cain's revenge is sevenfold, then Lemek's is seventy-sevenfold. That is, whoever touches Cain, Cain, God will revenge seven times. But now he said, 'I'm even better than God. I, whoever touches me or harms me, I will kill them or punish their generation seventy times.' He was so prideful. He." Believe that he can protect himself more so than God protect Cain, so he put himself above God. Something that is so blasphemous and arrogant. When a society or a person in that society is so proudful of their sin, then there is just no hope. There is no nothing that is worse than that, and our society has come to that point. Movies nowadays. Show forth sin as something that is so normal and common. In Friends, the comedy, the the、uh, beliefs of this world is so so out front.、Uh, men and women living with each other, and、uh, women kissing women, and it's supposed to be a friendly, family friendly show. How can that be? 
And then uh, those movies that are rated R or rated X, the movies nowadays show forth sin as something that is so common, so normal, and so the children of God sees it as also normal. You, you hear it so much that it becomes normal and common to the point that when you hear those cussing words, it's, you don't just... It, it, it doesn't strike you anymore to hear the cussing words. Nothing wrong about it. Their ears have become like... A person who has been next to the uh, bathroom for many days and do not hear the smell, how it smells. So it is sin that caused Jesus to sacrifice his his body on the cross. God hates sin and cannot accept sin. And when we we are to love the sinner, but we cannot love the sin. We can we are to love someone who though they harm us, but we cannot love because they have lo- harmed us well. Okay, we can love the person who robs us, but we cannot love them because they are a robber. That is, we can love the sinner, but we do not love them because they are a sinner. God hates sin, and He hates the sinner. Uh, we cannot say that God hates sin but loves the sinners. No, He does not love sinners. He cannot accept sinners. It's like, oh, I love terrorists. You can say, I love terrorists. No, can you say that? Can you say that you love terrorists? Though they terror other people? Not because they are terrorists that we love them. I hate terrorists. God hates sinners because they do sin. God loves people although they have sinned. And who are the sinners? You and I. God loves us though we are, we have sinned. Yet if we do not repent and acknowledge Him, then we are under His condemnation and punishment. And so what a shame for those who are under His condemnation. Do never be proud of your sin. The society at the beginning, they, because of their pride and their arrogance and their blasphemy that they pursue their their um, fleshly desires. You see that Lamech took two wives. One wife is enough, right? Yeah, he took two wives. One Ada and one Zillah. God created only one Eve. He did not create Eve and others. No, God created only one Adam and one Eve. And this, he went against the word of God. And there's an Ada and a Zilla for his wives. And the Vietnamese say what? The character uh, kills the, the beauty. But here we see that Ada, the name Ada means beautiful. And the name Zilla means uh, like a, 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 a sound that continues and vibrates and carries on. So it's like it, though, instead of um, uh, Lamech seeing the beauty of the nature of the character, yet he only sees the beauty on the outside, not necessarily the beauty inside. So now, today, more than any time in history, we are filled with the desires of the flesh. People use sex to sell things. The that car can be beautiful doesn't ma- doesn't matter. But you see a beautiful woman and sexy, then they like to look at. They will see that the desires of the flesh uh, they attract people. They don't see the car, but they see the sexy woman. And so we are we escape from all the. Um, the thinking of the past. In the past, you have to be married first, and then you live with one another. And now, with progress, now men and women can live together, and there's nothing wrong with it. That's society. We, that is not progress. That is going backwards. That is going down. 
People say that you are free from things in the past. Now there is no fault divorce. If you want to divorce, just go ahead and divorce. If you divorce, you can even enjoy yourself more because single motherhood can have. You are awarded by the society to have more uh, to support you. They they think that that is progress, but that is really going backwards. You are li-、uh, missing out on the blessings of the Lord, and many children of God have fallen into that state. They want to divorce so that they can be a single mother to receive the benefits of the government. The, they have thrown out the plans of God about morality, about marriage, under the title of progress. We see that all those things. Go only against God, and the final point about their spirituality is that they use things for their selfishness. As I have shared, the more technology progresses, the more people harm and kill each other. It's worse and more effective. We are not surprised when we see the progress of sharp weapons in verse 22. That's connected to the point that Lamech was so proudful about his killing of people in verse 23 and 24. We see that yes, the progress of the bronze and iron is beneficial to society. It can harm society. The knowledge of the technology. Can be used to make weapons to kill people. We can say that Lemek probably did not put aside any of the sharp weapons that he can use to kill people. The first song that is recorded in history is、uh, praise to violence.、Uh, we, today, there is so much progress, yet. There, it can also be used to harm people. We see that music is used to satisfy、uh, our souls, but now it is also used to destroy the world. The magazines and all the movies and all that occur progress, and they、um, excuse all those things as progress. But that is the system of this world, and that system progresses in different ways. But is without God, a life without God. There are many things, right? Yes, we see that's progress, but those are all zeros. Zeros without God has no value. Your life without God, whether you be successful, whether you are good, whether you are educated, whether you are beautiful or talented. All those things are just zeros. The goodness that God gave to us has been twisted and distorted for bad, for evil. But the Bible does not end there. The Bible lets us see that calling upon God or invoking God, seeking the Lord, then your progress is a reality. Seth was born. Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and called his name Seth. For she said, "God has appointed for me another offspring instead of Abel, for Cain killed him." It's not that Seth、uh, to replace Cain who had sinned against God, but Seth was to replace Abel. And Eve knew that Cain was has turned away from God, and now one who replaces Cain, one who fears the Lord. One who submits to God and obeys God, and named that son Seth. Seth means to ordain, to ordain in place of Abel. And we read the、uh, children of Seth. To Seth also a son was born, and he named he called his name Enosh. Enosh means weak. 
to the point that we acknowledge that we are those who are powerless and weak, and we are powerless. We cannot overcome the state of sin, the power of sin. That we ourselves, by ourselves, can have a good relationship with God. By ourselves, that we can have a life that is beneficial to God. Then we can call upon the Lord. Adam and Eve. Eve had faith in in God, and so she relied on God. And she was mistaken in the past. She believed that God uh, would give her a savior, but no, it's not. Now she gives birth to a son, another son, and named him Seth, and to replace. And we know that Jesus Christ was born through the descendants of Seth. Not by the descendants of Cain. If we follow the, the generation before Jesus, it is after Seth came. Who? Anyways, it comes down to the generation descendants and Jesus. So we see that Eve sinned against God, and she um, was cast out of the Eden Garden of Eden. But she kept her faith in God, and she realized. And acknowledge that there must be a savior that comes from God, and Jesus is the Lamb of God, the one who comes to take away the sins of the world. You cannot come to God if you rely on your righteousness and goodness only, totally on the Lord Jesus Christ. And Eve acknowledged that. And when we come to God as Enosh, Seth gives. His son's name Elnash, which means weak, and because he knows that he is weak, he knew to call upon the Lord. Those who think that they have talent and power, they don't need God. They say that you go on a car, into a car, and you say that oh, you're a pretty good driver, so you just turn on the key and drive. But those who know their own weaknesses or whatever, they ask the Lord. To protect them and guide them, Lord, keep me safe through this, this part. If we know we're weak, we rely on the Lord, right? But if we say that, oh, this is easy, I can take care of it. My work, I can take care of it. I don't need God.、Uh, my education, I can、uh, do it myself. I don't need God. And then you go, and then all of a sudden you fall, and then you know at that time that you need to rely on God. That is because we are weak. We're very weak. We need to know that we are weak. We are like a.、Uh, A thin、um, stick that can just fall when the wind blows. Because of those who know they're weak, they know to call upon the Lord. At that time, people began to call upon the name of the Lord. Verse twenty-six. We see the descendants of Seth are do not lack anything compared to the, the descendants of Cain、uh, in progress of technology, of literature, in all aspects of life. Why? Because we see that Seth had a descendant. Uh, a great descendant. That next week we will study. That we see that Seth called upon the Lord, and in that there is Enosh. Or、uh, I'm sorry, Enoch. Enoch is one who walked with the Lord, and we see that the one who has God is a blessed life, a blessed person. Those who have progress without God, we have nothing. But those who have God, and we have progress, we have everything. The Bible says that seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and then what? He will add all those things. So we need to seek the Lord above all, and then God will give us all those other things. God will give us enough to eat, to drink, to live. He will give us a blessed family. He will give us a life, a life that is successful and beneficial. But first of all, we must seek the Lord. We must seek Him above all in our life. Amen. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, our, we thank you, Lord, that you want us to submit to you, Lord, and we you want us to seek you above all in our lives. Father, forgive us for there are times that we have lived according to our own will, our own strength, and Lord, many times we you have given us the rod.、Uh, failure has come to. In our lives, so that we know to seek you above all in our lives. May all the glory be to you, Lord, forever. Amen. Amen.